Hello, I'm Amy Zawi with the Jerusalem Connection Red Alert Report for Wednesday, October 10th. Let's get specific. For a few weeks now, I've reported on BDS, that is Boycott, Divest, and Sanction Activities targeting the Nation of Israel and Jewish people worldwide. And I've included uh, specific events that have happened with um, artists and activists and even students and even some legislation. Those were always sort of an overview, um, 50,000 foot view of what was going on. But today I want to talk specifically about two college students and their experiences with the BDS movement on their college campuses as um, in the last uh, year or the last school year. Now remember, BDS um, are actions on college campuses that leash poison into that community, if you ask me. BDS is not about protesting or disagreeing about Israelis, Israel's so-called human rights oppressions or even their policies in general. It has been uh, documented in many, many occasions as being um, defined as anti-Semitic. Moreover, we are a country of nowadays, see something, say something, me too, believe her, and of course we have the underlying anti-bullying narrative that has been around for a few years between Hollywood and the media. Now these are pretty ironic stances to take because Jewish students and Zionists in general are often left on the back of the bus when it comes to affording them any protections, believing them, or having people try to identify with what they're going through. As reported in the New York Post by Dory Lewick on September 29th at Columbia University in New York City, there is a student named Ophir Dayan. She is the daughter of Danny Dayan, who I've actually met in person at events in Washington, D.C. Danny, the father, is the Israel General Counsel in New York City. And Ophir is an IDF uh, officer who has served time in hostile territory in Gaza and Lebanon, and now she's a student at Columbia, and she's 24 years old. She has, in this article, first-handedly recounted the hostilities and bullying that she has felt, and including the um, unsafe nature of the campus, as a Jewish student specifically by other students who are members of the SJP, Students for Justice in Palestine, a group I have talked about on many college campuses in the past. She writes, I am worried about my personal safety. SJP is violent. What happened was, is about a year ago in the fall of 2017, Ophir was on the phone speaking in Hebrew and a woman uh, of the SJP overheard her and was screaming, stop killing Muslim babies, you're a murderer, Zionists get out. Now this was in the lobby of the Middle East Institute on campus, for which Ophir is a, uh, a Middle East Studies major. A nearby safety officer was present and did nothing. In October of 2017, Ophir said that she and four members of the um, group called Students for Supporting Israel, the SSI, they were leaving for a on-campus event to support beauty queen, Israeli beauty queen, Titi Anwa. And the moment the SJP members saw us, this is from Ophir, they started screaming their slogans with a microphone to intimidate us. And there was at least 50 SJP members blocking the walkway. Now think how you would feel if you were part of a group of four walking to an on-campus event to honor someone's achievements and you had 50 people with megaphones screaming that you're a horrible person and you're from a horrible place. They were very angry and it was scary. She did report it to the school for which they have so far done nothing. She said she believes it might have escalated to physical violence. She did file a complaint with the student governing board and she even included cell phone video of the event. However, nothing has happened yet. When speaking with the professor uh, Goldberg, who's the head of the University Student Life Group, she was told by that professor to put the uh, student's security number in her speed dial. In another event of February 2018, Ophir's father, Danny Diane, was to deliver a speech on campus. SJP protesters set up mock checkpoints along the way to intimidate attendees to this speech. Ophir was handed a flyer about her father, noting him as a war criminal. Again, this is not free speech, this is harassment. 
In March of 2018, Ophir said the SJP members were screaming the word terrorist at her while she and others were handing out literature written in Hebrew during Hebrew Liberation Week. The complaints that they have filed with the school's education board have come with no progress, nor with Professor Goldberg and the University Life Department. They were told to simply take better precautions. They were blowing us off, Ophir noted. At, the, at a meeting just this past summer, an administrator told the SASI that the school can't do anything absent proof of anti-Semitism. Ophir responded, I thought the university would protect me, but they didn't do anything. The school stands by as I am harassed. Ophir also noticed that, noted that she is afraid that perhaps she has to be physically assaulted before any action will take place. On October 4th at the Columbia University, a, a student um, peaceful protest was organized by Israeli Jewish and Zionist students and, and the like to try to raise awareness for these issues and try to get the administration's attention. They do not in any way want to quell free speech or healthy debate about happenings of the Middle East and differences of opinion. What they do not like is the hostility and threatening violent nature of the SJP's actions and the fact that nobody will pull them back from that particular set of actions. Moreover, at the University of Illinois, a young lady named Haley Nagelberg posted a four-minute video, which you can find on YouTube or on her um, Facebook page or on the Facebook page camera on campus. She gave a speech to the Board of Trustees on uh, September 27th, documenting in full detail all of the um, hostile and threatening events that happened to her on campus in the three years that she's been attending as a result of her being Jewish and being an active part of the Jewish community and the supporting Israel communities that are on campus. She addressed the issues of discrimination and the fact that it is not a safe place or a welcoming environment for students such as herself and to her this is very disappointing because she truly did want to love her experience at U of I and outside that particular strain which is a major strain of her experience at the U of I she actually is a thriving and successful student and enjoys learning and her studies. But in this four and a half minute speech to the uh, University of Illinois System Board of Trustees, so those are the trustees in charge of all the campuses, but she was begging them to please take note of the um, discrimination happening on campus and to set boundaries and to allow that anti-Semitism be quelled and not run amok in the name of free speech. She would like her campus to be a safe place. So here we have Ophir Dayan and Haley Nagelberg, both recounting in a very public way extremely specific events that have happened to them and how administrations at their schools did nothing to protect them so far. The interesting thing about both women is that they are not um, timid, they are not bitter, and they are not angry, they are disappointed, yet they are optimistic and hold in their hearts a hope, it seems, when I watched each of them, that things can change and will be better. And that is a unique position for um, what you might call a victim of crime or bullying or hostility. The fact that these women can stand tall, recount what happened, but do so in a way to um, profess that they want change and progress in this arena. So let us pray for the young men and women on college campuses who are Jewish, who are Israeli or who are Zionists in general, that they can go forth and um, live and express their ideas without hostility. Maybe perhaps there's healthy debate and discussion about various topics, but that it's done so in a scholarly manner, in a classy manner, and not a warlike manner. Shavuot Tov. Have a great week.